Whether you are just starting out or have been running for some time, a business plan can make a huge difference to the success or failure of your company. So don't skip this part. It's the fundamental building block of your business. In this video, we're going to look at all the fundamentals of creating a business plan so that you can feel confident in the direction that you're going. According to a study by Harvard Business Review, entrepreneurs who create a formal business plan are 16% more likely to achieve viability. 16% may not sound like a huge difference, but remember that 20% of new businesses fail during the first two years of being open, 45% during the first five years, and 65% are dead within 10 years. How many of those companies skipped a proper business plan? A business plan provides clarity, direction, and a roadmap to guide your decisions and actions. It's all about getting as clear as possible on what you want to achieve and how you're going to get there, so that you start moving in the right direction from day one. The first step in creating a business plan is to identify your vision and mission statements. These statements are the foundation of your plan. Your vision statement defines your long-term goals and aspirations, which you ultimately want to achieve with your business. Your mission statement, on the other hand, outlines the purpose and values of your business. These statements serve as a compass, guiding your business's direction and helping you stay focused. Every decision you make should be checked against your vision and mission statements to avoid getting distracted by short-term opportunities. So take some time to think about your vision and mission. What do you want to accomplish and what values will guide you along the way? Now that you have your vision and mission statements in place, it's time to define your business model. Your business model determines how your company will generate revenue and create value for customers. It's crucial to define your target market, understand your customers' needs, and identify a unique value proposition. Take Airbnb, for instance. They disrupted the hospitality industry with their peer-to-peer -peer marketplace model, connecting hosts and travelers worldwide. So think about your own business, who is your target market, what do they need, and how can you provide a unique solution? Most importantly, where's the revenue going to come from? Once you have a clear understanding of your business model, it's time to conduct market analysis. This step helps you understand your industry, competitors, and target customers. You need to study market trends, analyze customer behavior, and assess the competitive landscape. By conducting thorough market analysis, you can identify opportunities, mitigate risks, and make informed business decisions. This can be a daunting prospect if you've never done it before, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Pick 5 to 10 of your main competitors and look at their websites. Now ask yourself, what are they doing? What language do they use? Who are they targeting? Where do they advertise? What do they focus on? What do they do really well? What do they do badly? Where are the gaps in their offering? If all of your competitors are doing something specific, then that's probably a sign that it's something that works and you might want to copy it. Or maybe you're feeling brave and want to do it a different way. The more you analyze your marketplace, the more information you have and the better your decisions will be. With your market analysis in hand, it's time to outline your marketing strategy. This strategy will define how you'll promote your products or services to reach your target audience. It should include elements like branding, advertising, pricing, distribution channels, and customer acquisition tactics. The key here is to stay focused on the marketing that is likely to work for your business, instead of being pulled into marketing efforts that don't align with your goals. So think about your target audience, where they hang out, and how you can effectively reach them with your marketing efforts. For example, you might avoid spending any money or time on TikTok if you are targeting adults because TikTok is primarily used by teenagers. If you're running a physical business, then how are you going to market locally? What about newspaper ads? Or billboards? Or word of mouth? If you're advertising online, will Google or Facebook advertising be more suited to your business? Are there going to be opportunities for press releases that will allow you to get free publicity? Are you going to hire a marketing agency or do it yourself? How are you going to encourage customers to leave reviews? Will you send them a follow-up email? Will you ask them in person? Will you offer a referral scheme? And how much can you afford to spend acquiring a customer? Remember, there's no point paying for adverts if it costs more than the profits you make. 
Marketing will eat up every bit of budget you can throw at it, and there's no promise of customers at the end. That's why it's so important to get it right before you start spending money. Obviously, you'll learn and adapt as you go, but at least make sure you start in the right playing field. That's what the marketing strategy is all about. Remember that without a marketing strategy, you don't have a business, you just have something that no one knows about. Now let's move on to the organizational side of your business plan. Having a clear organizational structure and management plan is essential for efficient operations and effective decision making. You need to define roles, responsibilities, and reporting lines to ensure everyone understands their role in achieving business objectives. That includes you. When your employees know what is expected of them and how their work contributes to the company's success, they can operate far more effectively. So take some time to map out your organizational structure and define the key roles within your business. If you're a solo business owner, you still need to define which roles you'll perform and which you'll hire people in for. Will you use a marketing firm? Will you use an accountant? What about a cleaner? What about hiring a business coach? Moving on, let's dive into the details of your product line or services. In this section of your business plan, you'll provide a detailed description of what you offer, your pricing strategy, and any intellectual property or competitive advantages you may have. The point here is to analyze your strengths and weaknesses and to identify opportunities and threats in the market. You need to understand how your product or service fits into the market and how you can differentiate yourself from competitors. So think about what makes your offering unique and how you can position it to capture your target customer's attention. Last but not least, let's talk about your sales strategy. This strategy outlines how you'll attract and retain customers, close deals, and achieve revenue targets. You need to define your sales channels, pricing models, and sales techniques. This is where we take the business model and the marketing strategy and get much more specific about how we'll sell to customers. So let's look at everything to include. Firstly, who is your target customer? Clearly define who your customers are. What are their needs and wants? What problems are they facing that your product or service can solve? You should identify their demographic information, their behavior, their preferences, and other relevant details. Next, what are your sales goals? Set clear, measurable goals. This could be a certain revenue target, a number of new customers, an increased market share, etc. Make sure these goals align with your overall business objectives. Now define your unique selling proposition. Your USP. What sets your product or service apart from your competitors? Why should customers buy from you? Your USP should be the backbone of your sales strategy, clearly communicating the unique value you offer. Your sales strategy should also list your sales tactics. Determine what sales tactics you'll use to reach your customers. This could include direct sales, online sales, telemarketing, partnerships with resellers, or any number of other tactics. That brings us on to your sales channels. Decide on the platforms you'll use to reach your customers. This might involve selling directly to customers through a website, using a sales team for business to business sales, partnering with retailers, etc. To start with, keep the number small so that you can focus your energies. You'll need to include a pricing strategy. Determine how you'll price your product or service. You should consider various factors like your cost of goods sold, market conditions, competitor pricing, and your target customer's willingness to pay. If it isn't a solo operation, you should detail your sales team structure. Who will be responsible for which tasks? How will they be trained and managed? How will their performance be measured and rewarded? Spend time creating your sales process too. Define the steps you'll take to move a customer from a prospect to a paying customer. This often includes stages like prospecting, initial contact, needs assessment, presentation, handling objections, closing, and follow-up. If you are going to have more than a handful of clients, you will need a CRM system. A customer relations management system keeps information on all of your customers, including basic information like addresses, but can include much more information about preferences, purchase history, and so on. This can help you keep track of customer interactions, manage leads, and analyze sales data. Finally, list your key performance indicators. Identify which metrics you'll use to measure the success of your sales strategy. These could include sales revenue, number of new customers, 
average deal size, sales cycle length, customer lifetime value, and others. That's it for today's video on creating a business plan. But there's more to come. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss part two, where we look at some of the areas often missed from a business plan. Also, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with anyone you know who might find it useful or interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.